Barcelona gives Brazil their first ever Olympic gold medal. The most insane goal I have ever seen. And still, and it has! Here he is again. That's astonishing. Oh. It's absolutely to the What a save by Fry! Dribbler! It's Torres oh. to give Chelsea a place in the Champions League final. Oh. I don't believe it. What a goal we have just seen from Roberto Carlos. Despite its enormous popularity, few people are aware of football's rich history and its deep origins in England. One thing is certain though, football or soccer is the most popular sport on the planet. Who, however, invented football? And what is the origin of the sport? For ages football has captured the hearts of millions of people. The sport has been played both indoors and outdoors as well as on the virtual clay. According to FIFA, approximately 240 million individuals from over 200 different nations participate in the sport. It should come as no surprise that football has a complicated and old history, therefore answers to queries like where was football created and what country invented football are not that simple. Thousands of years before modern football took off in the 19th century, older versions of a game involving kicking a ball were played. So we may divide football history into two major periods to better comprehend its origins, ancient and contemporary. Several comparable ball games, some of which can be traced back to the 3rd century BC, were played throughout history and are to be considered early variants of football. One of the earliest versions of the game was played in China during the Han Dynasty. This game was known as Tzu Chu or Kuju and included participants kicking a ball into a net. This ball game was played for amusement or competition or either entertainment for royal courts as well as to train military personnel. The sport was also enjoyed by the emperor of the Han dynasty himself. In addition, similar to modern football, competitors had to kick the ball with their feet to score and could not touch the ball with their hands. The Aztecs could also claim to be the inventors of football. To Charlie, their version of the game was developed about 3,000 years ago and this ancient Aztec game was occasionally performed at religious occasions when games were played as part of a ritual with the ball representing the sun. There was a lot of tension during these games, however, since the losing captain would be murdered as a sacrifice to the gods at the conclusion of the game. Football today is still popular in South America but captains do get a significantly better treatment the ancient Greeks also played a game called Episkaros, which was very similar to contemporary football, with a few exceptions that permitted participants to use their hands to play. As a result, Episkaros was frequently played in a more violent manner. It was likewise seen as a low-status sport and it was never featured in the Panhellenic games. Eventually, it became Harpastion a violent ball game that was developing from Episkaros and was played in ancient Rome that influenced the birth of football in Britannica. Harpastium was a two-team game in which the goal was to keep the ball on a single team's side for as long as possible by passing and kicking it back and forth to one another. It was customary for players to seize the ball with the use of violence. While the origins of association football may be linked to the ancient Roman game, it is unknown how much the British borrowed from the Harpastion, which eventually led to the creation of the modern football as we know it today. Even though it's unclear who came up with football originally, we are certain that at least one version of the sport was indeed created in England, somewhere in the 9th century. Football as we know it now was very different from the game played at that time. The object of this game was to kick a pig's blather through English settlements. Then, during the Middle Ages, the British started playing folk football, sometimes known as folk ball, and the history of football was irrevocably altered ever since. To score points in this game, players had to kick, carry or throw a ball into a goal. Unlike modern association football, which is played on a pitch, folk ball was in play there. Due to the lack of football fields, games were played on grassy surfaces and public streets. 
As a result, several people could play the game at once, even if the goals were situated far off from one another. This game quickly gained popularity and expanded to France from England's borders. It should come as no surprise that folk football was a brutal game with very little regulations. Players were permitted to kick each other's shins, a practice known as shinning, regardless of whether they were close to the ball. Matches would get so rowdy that players and fans would frequently cause damage to the city and hurt or murder players and participants. The Lord Mayor of London eventually forbade the British from playing football in the early 14th century, owing to the chaos it created and anyone found participating in a football match would be imprisoned. Modern football began to be played again in London in the early 19th century, but there had been some alterations from the sport's medieval's origin. Thanks to the public schools in places like Rugby, Winchester, Charterhouse and Eton, football re-emerged and gained popularity once more. The game was played in the winter between residential homes, there was no obvious difference between rugby and football at this period, and every school had its own set of regulations. While some schools, like rugby, permitted the holding the ball, other schools, like Eton, only allowed foot contact with the ball. Thus, the game was referred to as the dribbling game at Eton and the running game at rugby. While no single person can be identified throughout the history of football as the inventor of the sport, Ebenezer Cobb Marley is regarded as the father of football, or at the very least, the inventor of the first set of regulations. In London, England, Morley founded the Barnes Football Club in 1862. Although the Cambridge rules were created earlier in the 19th century, not everyone accepted them and no one was in charge of enforcing them. Thus, clubs all throughout England continued to play by their own rules. Morley, though, was tired of discussing regulations with rival teams before games, so he resolved to design a set of rules that could be used by a single regulating body to oversee football clubs across England. He submitted his proposal to Bell's Live newspaper, which eventually led to a meeting with numerous football clubs in and around London. This meeting resulted in the founding of the first football association in 1863 and the very first set of regulation prohibiting ball handling. Morley became the football association's first secretary and eventually its second president as a result of these meetings. He later on drafted formal laws of the game which currently serve as the foundation for the modern FIFA rules. 